Hello everybody again. Uh, we're just going to jump right back into the ozone. Love it, hate it. We're actually on the love it part now and I want to be on this slide here because if you remember the, uh, the bad nearby part is all about the troposphere here. Uh, but we're into the good up high part now, which is in the stratosphere. One final point about photochemical smog. They call it photochemical smog because photo means light. And so the sunlight is driving a lot of the chemical reactions. And so like sunny places like L.A. or Santiago or Denver, uh, you got that light that's causing the nitrogen oxides and the uh, oxygen or carbon monoxide or whatever to, to create that ozone. Um, and so now we're going to get into the stratosphere. And so... Uh, the, oh, here's what's going on. I want to show you, actually not that one yet. Where's my other one? This one right here. And so here we are at the troposphere. This red line is uh, temperature. This is altitude. And just one thing to point out is, if you remember the, uh, with the, the, the sun's rays come in and they hit the ground and they turn into uh, infrared radiation, heat. So just notice that here low to the ground, our temperature is quite a bit higher. As you go, as you increase in altitude, the temperature drops for the troposphere. Then up here in the stratosphere and the thermosphere, it gets all funky and all bets are off. But the real thing I want you to see here is this blue line is the ozone. And so just notice that down here there's a lot of ozone, and that's our smog here. But really compared to the stratosphere, which is where the ozone layer is, uh, it's way less down here. So this is where all our ozone is concentrated up in the stratosphere, and we like it there. So those ozone molecules, what they do is they absorb uh, ultraviolet radiation, which looks like this. These are our UV rays, not to be confused with the climate change, which is like heat over here. So we're concerned about UV now. And so if you, got, you get sunglasses, you see that little sticker that says, you know, protects you from UV radiation uh, or sunscreen. This is the whole point. This is what gives you sunburns. Um, and so the, the, the ozone layer, what it does is those O3 molecules, and O2 will do it as, as well, but O3 does it better. They, they absorb and basically shield us from ultraviolet radiation. And so the, we want those O3s up there so it blocks the UV rays from coming into Earth. And we still get some, um, but that has been changing and we, we've kind of discovered what was going on. And so as we proceed with this, I want to make some comparisons between climate change and the hole in the ozone layer because I know there's misconceptions uh, with not only APE students, but actually George Bush's appointed uh, head of the EPA a few years back was totally confusing these two issues and you can't, they're, they're different, they're different animals. Uh, and so I've got kind of like, and so this is not Cornell, just when you thought it was all Cornell, this is different. Um, I've got the where, uh, the type of radiation, the causes, the mechanism, F effects and treaties involved uh, just to kind of compare and contrast the hole in the ozone layer to climate change. So the first one is where is it? We know stratosphere is high in the sky, uh, troposphere is nearby. Uh, now we know we're concerned about ultraviolet radiation uh, and so what's going on? And so there's this molecule, it's, it's actually a pretty interesting story, it's called the uh, chlorofluorocarbon really all halocarbons uh, and the halogens if you remember is that column on uh, the periodic table right next to the noble gases is like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, those ones. And so those ones can wreak havoc on the ozone layer and we didn't know why for a while. But I'm going to tell you a quick story about uh, the CFC uh, which back in the early 80s I believe is when it was, it, they, they, these scientists concocted this this miracle molecule called the chlorofluorocarbon and it was it had all these great uses it was a gas and the reason they liked it is because it didn't react with anything here on like in the troposphere it was inert didn't react and so they could use it as propellants for like hairspray so think 80s think big hair um, hairspray spray paint um, they'd use it for uh, like little kind of things to, to blow air on to, to clean motherboards and computers but the main use of it was uh, and also for styrofoam that was like when they invented styrofoam it used to be you get your Big Mac from McDonald's you'd flip it over in the styrofoam thing it was awesome you put your french fries on one side Big Mac on the other and this is like a little styrofoam container nobody knew any better right we, we didn't think about it but so what was filling that styrofoam was the CFCs right so it's super light gas super cheap the big one was for coolants for refrigerators refrigerators and air conditioners and cars. And so um, what eventually happened though is these, especially if you're spraying it on your hair or whatever, you got these CFCs going out into the environment. They didn't break down the troposphere, 
what they did was they went up to the stratosphere, and up in the stratosphere, they start, they, the chlorofluorocarbon uh, would get hit by UV radiation and it would come apart. And so the, the problem with the CFC is the chlorine. Because um, what happens is that loose chlorine atom, you're going to want to follow this, maybe even draw a picture of this, that chlorine atom reacts with O3. And so check it out. Chlorine comes in, O3 comes in, and it forms chlorine monoxide. And notice that O2 gets kicked off there. Chlorine monoxide comes, and then another oxygen will come in and grab that oxygen and make O2. Now the chlorine is loose again to do it again. And so basically, uh, the chlorine is a, a catalyst. It's not used up in the reaction, but the reaction doesn't happen unless the chlorine's there for the most part. And so these chlorine atoms, I mean, it's kind of scary they, when they finally figured it out. One chlorine, check it out down here, can stay active between 100 and 150 years and can break down around 100,000 molecules of ozone. It just keeps on going. Very destructive. And we've put up like just truckloads of this stuff. And so even if we cut ozone or CFC emissions completely, we're already committed to another 100 years of activity, right? Because they're, they're, they're active up there. And so you can see your little uh, aerosol can in your refrigerator here. And so uh, there's old refrigerators, you know, that are still out there. And so when you dispose of a refrigerator, you, you have to do it, you know, you got to take it to the, to the place and then they take it apart and then they contain that gas. Because what you don't want to do is just dump these things and they break in the landfill just like that Big Macs thing from McDonald's and it gets crushed and all the gas goes up. Um, same thing with uh, air conditioning in cars. It'd be like you'd have a leaky, this is the 80s, leaky air conditioners, and they'd go fill it with Freon, which is basically CFCs. They'd fill it, and it just keeps leaking, and you got more AC until it runs out, and then they'd fill it again, and people just didn't know. Um, and now we do. And when they first started seeing holes like this, uh, at first people didn't believe it, but then, so this is over the uh, Antarctica is where the hole shows up the most. And we'll, we'll read about that. I'm not going to get into why it's there the most, but it's partially because it's so cold. But the southern hemisphere is getting affected uh, is where you, see, you really notice the hole. So it's not like a donut hole. It's not like you can stick your finger in there or anything like that. It's just a really thin spot of ozone that concentrates during their spring in the southern hemisphere, which is like September, October, November. So their spring is when you really see it. And then as uh, their spring turns to summer, it warms up. And basically, as it warms up, that uh, ozone spreads. So the hole kind of like disperses and more ozone comes in and so you don't see the hole as much. But So basically it's thinning everywhere but the hole starts in uh, over the Antarctic. And so places like Australia, South America, I, shoot, when I was traveling down there I, I talked to this guy who had met these people in the Amazon who are having, these are like the tribal people that are having skin cancer for the first time, right? So skin cancer is on the rise. Uh, it also causes eye cataracts. Uh, so I guess, well, where are we here? Uh, I think I just addressed all that. So yeah, so in effects, you get skin, it's more just increased skin cancer, sunburn uh, with animals too, not just people. Uh, and then also for plants, and know this for AP purposes, uh, it disrupts photosynthesis. So you get that extra uh, UV radiation causes problems with that. So the nice thing, and just to compare this over here, uh, it's just it's, climate change is different when we're talking about the greenhouse effect. We're talking about uh, other things. CFCs can be a greenhouse gas while they're down low, but they, they go up to the top. So it's not, it's, if you need to ignore CFCs as a greenhouse gas, because CFCs are, you want to associate that with ozone layer. Um, and this is changes in the weather. Ultraviolet radiation coming in from the ozone is not going to do a change in weather. It's just, it's, it does other damage. And so we know about the Kyoto Protocol, and that didn't really work out. But on the flip side, the good news for the ozone is the Montreal Protocol did work out. That was in 1989, and it was a worldwide collaboration. People came together. They looked for alternatives from CFCs, uh, and a lot of people made money off of it. There is, you know, it's a business venture. People got creative, and so necessity is the mother of invention and so we got clear on that and so uh, and there's some shady business and there's still some CFC emissions happening in uh, other countries where people aren't watching this carefully but the United States and Europe and all the big players have really phased that out and so uh, we are definitely on the mend with the ozone which is which is good news because we like that ozone layer we love it up high we, we don't really like it down low remember that thanks for being with me we'll see you next time maybe you can go back and do a nice little summary here to just pull it all together thanks